Hey, what's up everyone? Tim Reset here, and uh, today we'll be talking about two metrics that are vital to a trading system's performance, and that would be the expectancy and the R multiple. We'll talk about how we can use these two ratios to further our trading development and expand to other markets. Now, a lot of the times, when we look at other markets to trade, it's important to make sure that the numbers make sense and make sure that the risk to reward is valid on those markets and make sure that it's worth our time. And so <clears throat> we can use the expectancy and the R multiple to do so. I'll also give you some tools uh, or at least some techniques to go back through your current trades and give you kind of a different way to look at <clears throat> the uh, R multiple and uh, expectancy within your current uh, current framework. So with that, let's jump right in. We'll start off with talking about trading system development and how you can use these metrics to expand upon the system that you already have and how you can use the metrics to look for new markets to trade. Uh, in the last video we talked about you know expanding the soybeans market and uh, using these two metrics is really the stepping stone, the first step to determining uh, whether or not a market is going to be conducive or, or good um, good to trade uh, using the current system that we have. So those two metrics that we just mentioned, the expectancy and the R multiple. And it's important to understand these two metrics because they really do build the foundation for long-term profits. And I believe it was Mark Douglas in Trading in the Zone where he talks about you know, looking at your trades not as individual trades, not as each trade in and of itself, but looking at them in groups of trades. And it really wasn't until I started viewing my trading in terms of probability and statistics that I was really able to detach myself from the emotions of winning and losing money, that I was able to detach myself from the subjective nature that is kind of built in to our human psyche and our human behavioral aspects. And really what it comes down to is trading is a game of numbers. Just as a, con uh, a casino creates an edge of sometimes as small as 51% over the long term, the house always wins. So understanding these metrics will help build confidence in your ability to execute each and every time, your ability to take the trades as they come, whether your last or regardless of whether or not your last trade or your last five or seven or eight trades were winners or losers. And that's something that's really important. One of the uh, cognitive biases that are kind of wired and ingrained in our head is you know that recency bias how did the last trade turn out how did the last groups of or series of trades turn out and subconsciously that can have an effect on the way we trade the next series of trades or the very next trade it can add some fear and some more emotional levels to our trading so understanding the metrics and understanding that you know if we have a trading system with a positive expectancy over a longer period of time then it's simply our job to take every setup that meets our criteria each and every time and trade it the same way each and every time following our rules and again, it helps us remove that emotional attachment, which is one of the toughest things, I think, for traders uh, across both young, just getting started, and uh, seasoned veterans as well. You know, just because you have 10 years' experience in the markets doesn't mean 
that you've necessarily been able to master that emotional attachment and detachment, as it were. So really getting to the core, clarifying your ideas, clarifying your entry signals and your trade management and your exit criteria is the first step. And then plugging in your data into these ratios that we'll get into here in a moment is really the next step towards building that concrete trading methodology. And you know, in the end, understanding your system, uh, developing your own rules, uh, tweaking and modifying things that you read, things that you pick up on, things that you may see here uh, in the e -mini Mind videos, they really do make you a better trader. When you really understand what's going on underneath, just as we look at market internals, to understand what's going on underneath the hood, so to speak, it really does make you a better trader. And there's a quote that I like from uh, Tom Sosnoff over at Thinkorswim, and that's, investors and traders need to think like casinos. Casinos don't gamble. They let the probabilities work for them over many small bets. And I think it's really important to understand that and almost reframe our view from being the casino gambler, the person that sits down at the blackjack table and tries to work the, uh, work the cards, work the players, work the casino, to kind of doing a 180 and viewing the markets as the casino itself. Developing an edge and understanding that over the long run, that edge is your statistical advantage. So let's jump into the R multiple. And you can think of R as risk. The R multiple is essentially your value for risk. And so it's all about risk to reward. So your initial stop is essentially one R. And everything is related to that initial stop. So for instance, if you placed a trade and you were stopped out on that trade from the uh, the onset you would have a loss of 1R. If you were to break your rules and you were to widen your stop and instead of having a two-point stop you then took a four-point loss you would have a loss of 2R. If you were risking two points and the trade ended up being two points profitable, you would have a 1R gain. So the R multiple is essentially profit per trade divided by R. And it's a really good exercise to go back through all of the trades, all of the data that you have, and you can look at your trades not in terms of dollars profit loss, not even in terms of ticks or pips profit and loss, but in terms of R. How much did you risk on the, 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 on the position at the onset of the trade? And what was the result? And you can take a look at your profit or gain over the risk per trade. One other way uh, to, to think about it, or another way to kind of look at the risk to reward ratio, <clears throat> is to take a look at your average winner over your average loser. And this is kind of the first uh, piece that gets plugged into the expectancy. But, you know, what is your average R? What is your average risk? What is your average initial risk? And then, what is your average loser, and how does that compare? Are you starting with an initial risk of two points, and you find that, you know, with a reduced risk style of trading, your average loser only ends up being about a point, and your average winner ends up being, say, three points. You know, those are two very important metrics to, or pieces of data to have, because we're going to be plugging those in to uh, to some equations here as we go. So 
you want to view your trade outcomes in terms of R. And um, some examples are if you have a one point loser with a two point initial stop, you end up with a loss of half R. If you had a two point winner with a two point stop, you'd have a one R gain. And if you had a four point winner with a two point stop, you'd have a two R gain. So really the total trades in terms of R is kind of the analysis that we're looking for in this example. So another exercise you can do is total up your trades in terms of R. So we have five trades here. Ideally, you'd have at least 50 or 100 trades to gather data from. Anything smaller than that can, you know, one trade can really affect the outcome. Obviously, the more data in a statistical set, the better because the less one trade has an effect on the larger set. So, but for this uh, example purposes, let's say we had five trades. We had a half R loss, a two R gain, a one R gain, a one R loss, and a six R gain. If you total those up and divide by the number of trades, in this case five, what that gives you is a value and that's telling you that you know over the long term you can expect that a given system will make in this time uh, in this case one and a half times your risk so the risk that you're taking you can expect the system to return x amount compared to your risk so for every dollar at risk you'd essentially be uh, looking to uh, make one in, uh, $1. fifty on that risk. And so you can use that to determine things like how many contracts you should trade. If you take a look at your largest drawdown period, it can really help determine the least amount of risk for the maximum amount of reward. And uh, Greg Thurman over at Trading Journal Spreadsheets has some specific spreadsheets that you can use to calculate things like the R multiple, the expectancy curve, and even your uh, drawdown. And that can be really helpful. I think it's important to, to understand the calculations and how they work. And so playing around with them you know, on a notepad or, or in Excel I think is beneficial, but uh, it can be, you know, save a lot of time to go through and just be able to dump in your data to the uh, spreadsheets that he has and then get spit out all of the analysis and the reports on the other end. And it, it does save a lot of time, but I think it is important to go through at least at first and understand how the calculations and how the analysis works because it really does give you a greater insight to your trading strategy and the method that you're using and allows you to go through and pinpoint areas that you could improve on and small tweaks that you can make uh, throughout the changing market conditions. It also gives you a heads up of whether or not the market is conducive at this time to your trading strategy. So looking at your trades <coughs> individually in terms of R looking at your average winner versus your average loser and then looking at your total trades in terms of R and getting that mean or that that average is a really good way to again help reduce that emotional attachment to each individual trade now if we turn over to expectancy expectancy is really the potential which you can expect from a system over many trades it's not over um, you know, one or two trades, but over the long term, the longer expected outcome average per trade. And so the calculation that I use in, uh, for expectancy is essentially the average winner times the win rate less the average loser times the loss rate. So once we have a, a good number of trades, uh, a lot of trade data to go off of, to, to analyze, you know, 50 or 100 trades at least, uh, over ideally, you know, two or three months um, to at least begin to get a gauge and come up with 
uh, a few conclusions, I suppose you could say. Uh, obviously, the more data and the more time, the better. There are programs out there that allow you to back test, but it can be um, there can be some biases that go along with back testing as well. So whether you're uh, placing trades on uh, a sim account or going back through all of your live trades and doing this analysis, uh, it really doesn't matter. But uh, the the point is to have at least you know 50 or 100 trades in that data set, so that once again you know one trade isn't throwing off the entire uh, system of performance. So uh, an example, we can uh, take a look at you know okay we have an average winner of $225 per contract, and an average loser of $100 per contract, and the winning percentage per trade is 55%. So we can expect with this with just these three uh, data points assuming that this is you know we'll, we'll call it 150 or 200 trades giving us this average winner, this average loser, and this per trade winning percentage. The gross expectancy would then be $78.75. And it's simply a matter of plugging in these numbers into the equation. 225 times 55% minus $100 loss times a loss rate of 45%. Then we can take that one step further and subtract out commission. And again, this would be per contract, giving you a net expectancy of $75 per trade. And that would essentially be the amount expected to make per trade per contract. And so if you stop and think about it, you know how much confidence would it ha would it give you to know that you know over a 6 month period of executing <clears throat> your trading strategy that you resulted in a net expectancy of 50, 75, 100, 150 dollars per trade. You know, it really puts it in perspective that each trade is simply a small piece in the bigger picture. Each trade does not have a large effect on the outcome, but the sum of those trades is really what builds that positive expectancy and those net profits over time. So it's a, a great exercise to go back through and uh, take a look at your trades in terms of average winner, your win rate, your average loser, your loss rate. Taking a look at the R multiple, the risk that you're taking on versus the reward. I think the more you understand the numbers, the more in tune you will end up feeling uh, because you will have less emotional attachment, less subjectivity. You will decrease the hesitation that occurs from uh, you know being afraid, being fearful, uh, wondering if the trade is, is going to work out or not. In the end, it really doesn't matter if this next trade is a winner or a loser. Obviously, the past performance or the past statistics is not a 100% predictor of the future. But if the statistical set is large enough, if the data is valid, then the net expectancy as a result can act as a, a very large confidence booster going forward. And it can really be a great metric to analyze whether or not a new market has profit potential. So a lot of times, you know, what I'll do it, when I'm looking to first expand to a new market is take a look at, you know, what is the average risk that I could expect to take, uh, and then you know, gauging the range of that market, what would be my average winning rate or winning percentage rather, um, the uh, range of those winning trades, and then when I go through and start placing trades and gathering data, I can take a look at the with a winning percentage, and really plugging these numbers into the R multiple and the expectancy allows me to get a very good sense and then I can compare this expectancy with the expectancy for the other markets and the other trading strategies. So it's a really good uh, gauge 
of effectiveness. So when expanding to other markets, it really is important to, to focus on risk first. Risk, risk, risk. It's all about managing the risk, controlling the risk, because the winning trades will present themselves. The winning days, the winning months, you know, those strings of winners, uh, that you know, roaring bull market will present itself. That uh, declining bear market uh, will will present itself, and the trades will be uh, visible. The trades will uh, allow you to take part in them, as long as you have a trading account to trade with. So, you know, focusing on the risk, living to trade another day, understanding that, you know, in the long run, it's all about hitting singles and doubles with a few home runs in the mix. It's not about going and swinging uh, swinging for a home run every single time, at least with you know my style of trading and more of the consistent longer term outlook. The less criteria, the better. The less entry criteria and exit and trade management criteria that you have, the less that you need to focus on. The less factors come into play, the less analysis by paralysis or paralysis by analysis rather looking for those uncorrelated markets really does help to add balance and then you can begin to tweak the system around the numbers and once you you know develop a methodology or a ideology towards the markets in general you'll notice that a lot of the principles that I use and the concepts the underlying concepts are all the same. It's just a matter of adapting those concepts to different markets. So it becomes a matter of tweaking the system to the numbers. And that all starts from you know meticulously recording your trades, whether you plug it into uh, trading journal spreadsheets, whether you do it by hand, whether you plug it into stock ticker. Uh, you know, recording those trades is really important because you want to have that data to go back and do analysis from. You know, with with trading, you're competing against some of the brightest minds in the world. You're competing against, you know, trading firms that have computerized systems that have no emotion. So you need to be extremely focused and extremely meticulous with the way that you trade, execute, record, and practice. Really, what I'm trying to give you here is, you know sharing my thought process and helping you build a successful framework for your trading you know as the saying goes give a man a fish you feed him for a day if you teach a man to fish you feed him for a lifetime and what I'm trying to do here is really give you the tools to teach you to fish teach you to develop your own methodology or at least expand upon or fit some of the concepts that I share into your own trading, into your own methodology, so that you can pull those trading concepts into your your own life and really expand the trading mindset into all areas and all aspects of your life because I feel that trading is so much more applicable than just to the stock market. It's that mindset, that ability to assess a situation to make very quick decisive snap judgments based on the information that you have at this moment and make this uh, decisive decisions that are not bias that are not emotional but are the best educate the best educated guess that you can make and a lot of that thought process gets developed through the trading mindset. So with that, I hope you uh, go back through and test, um, go back through and look at your trades in terms of R multiple, plug some of that data into the expectancy formula, <clears throat> and uh, I hope you're able to you know, find some value and tweak things uh, as need be. And with that, we will uh, talk to you again next week. Thanks so much, and have a great weekend.